up in the favorite. At least vocally, I'm going to be slow to respond because you're kidding me, dog. Both of you? No. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sketchy Live. Um, I have to apologize. There is a, um, like a, a lag, a delay between, um, like when you type something and then I actually, well, I mean, like I can see it pretty much right away, but there's going to be a delay in you hearing me respond unless I type back my response. So, um, good morning. Welcome to Sketchy Live. Today is a wonderful, wonderful day because we are celebrating Thanksgiving together, um, which I'm super, super duper excited about. So I'm just going to give like a few more minutes for, for, um, just everyone to populate and I'm going to pull up my reference. Um, so yeah, how is everyone doing today? Happy Thanksgiving. Um, those of you who are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving soon, at least in the States, I think Thanksgiving already passed in, um, Canada. So, um, yeah, where are my favorites? There we go. There's my girl. I'm really, really, really super excited. So good morning. Good morning. Hi from Little Rock. Hi from Portugal. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Um, I just want to do a shout out to all my students. Um, I'm really, really excited um, that some of you can tune in and shout out to some of my, my friends as well, um, my other mastery staff members, because we are gonna, um, I need like the, I'm gonna, we're gonna be donating towards our Thanksgiving um, food drive and this is just sort of like a, an arty kickoff for it. Um, it's like a thank you to all my students and everyone, so. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. This, this little young lady, she's um, actually one of my kids, one of my students, and she is just, I love her to bits and pieces. She's such a wonderful student. She's one of those kids that just really makes me want to be like the best teacher that I can be. Um, like so many of my students, they just, they really inspire me just to, to push further, to push my craft as an educator um, and as a, an artist personally, just because they're, they're so brilliant and beautiful. So, good morning from France. Hello from Germany. Actually, is it still morning in France? It's probably like afternoon. Good day. Good day to everyone. Or good evening. <laughs> Whatever time zone you are in. Good, good, good. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to wait another minute or so, and then we can get this paint party started. Um, so yeah, once again, there is a delay to when you comment, um, to when like you can hear me comment to it. Like I can see everything live, but there is a delay for when I vocally respond to it. I was trying to get my other laptop up and running so that I could like type back to everyone but unfortunately for some reason it just doesn't want to connect to the internet and that makes me really sad um <laughs> oh thank you jordan um i really really am happy to be their teacher we've been doing some really awesome projects um we were studying 
my third graders, they're studying oceans. And so we did this entire unit, which the fourth graders sort of just got tugged along with it. Um, and um, here, let me just move my mic a little bit if you can hear me better. Um, so yeah, we've been studying oceans together and it, it's been quite wonderful because we looked at how like plastics, like they're maybe only 5% of our plastics actually get recycled. So um, that, you know, that's, that's really, really sad. And we took all these plastic bottles and we painted the inside of them and we made these giant jellyfish. They look like Dale Chuli's, um glass artwork that he makes. Um, but they also look like these giant jellyfish. And so like, we're going to put lamps in them. I got lighting kits and I just had to figure out a spot where we're going to start hanging them. Um, and then I also got a black light and we started drawing like the deep sea fish, but we use like neon pigments. And so they glow under the black light and it's, it's absolutely spectacular. And I was just completely, hold on, I dropped something. Ugh blown away by the talent of these kids um, drawing these fish and, and learning how to draw um, jellyfish from observation. So I'm psyched. Hopefully I can take them to an aquarium and so they can actually see the jellies in person and it's, it's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's snowing in Ontario. That is really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I don't know like if anybody ever wants me to move the microphone closer to the actual like surface of the painting so that you can hear. Hey, Kristen. Um, so like if you want like that sort of AMS, I, what is what is the acronym for that? Like AMSR, like the, the sound of the, the paintbrush on the paper. Like if anybody wants that, just, you know, let me know for future reference. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna get started. Um, I am painting today with um, uh, oh my gosh, I just completely blanked. <laughs> um, today I'm going to be painting on um, arches paper, um, 300 GSM, 140 pound um, cotton paper, which is you know one of my absolute favorites. Um, I'm going to be using a combination of Viviva watercolors along with my um, tried and true Daniel Smith. Oh, look, I'm shedding. Um, M. Graham, some Sunnylair, and of course my absolute favorite Winsor Newton, um, Payne's Gray, because for some reason that's the only Payne's Gray that I really like. Um, uh -uh, uh -uh. Let me bring back OBS so I can see where I am. Um, I'm going to do my sketch as always. I like to use my rainbow pencils um, only so that you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I sometimes do my sketches like with a, like a 4H pencil um, if I don't feel like seeing the lines. But I feel like people seeing the lines today. Um, so our muse, um, she is a young lady. Um, her features are in between that like gross spurt of you right dog um where she still has like some of those very shortened features of a child but like she's starting to grow and give you hints of what she's going to be looking like as a teenager so i advise like really being careful with your drawing if you want it to be accurate if you don't have it feel like being accurate and just feel like being inspired by her sunshiny smile and those twinkling eyes that is cool um but I was finding as I was doing my sketches um I was having a lot of difficulty and I actually had to bring out my ruler um because I just kept on getting like some foreshortening wrong and I was frustrated like I started like I had to draw this poor child like three times and then finally I started um, dropping some guidelines using a colored pencil on a printout and I was like oh my gosh like I completely forgot about the foreshortening because there is a tilt to her head she is like one of those cute little like Princess Diana sort of like coy like shy um still like mischievous twinkle um tilt in her head so it's really easy to accidentally try to straighten it um 
so just just be mindful of that as you're working that her head is tilted um with her forehead forward and her jaw back so there is moving my chair um some foreshortening with her chin here it is going to be shortened and it might feel weird as you're drawing it but don't worry you're gonna be fine all right so let me get a ruler here um and move my sketchbook out of the way so yeah i'm going to be using my black and white printout just to get um just to draw and get measurements from, but then I'm actually going to be using the color reference photo. I got to stop hitting that with my leg um, for when I actually do start painting her. So let's get this started. Got my ruler and my protractor. All right, so her head, let me see if this was the 90 degree angle. Uh -huh. Yeah, so she she has her head tilted pretty much like at like a 20 degree angle. So yes, math. Um so if I drop just a wee little line here, let me get my up. Hang my sort of scan here. You probably can't see that, but whatevs. Um and then what did I say that was? Drop a line here. And... Oh, it's, it is a slight angle, but where is it? Okay, so actually I lied. It's more like a 10 degree angle. I can math. So yeah, math, it's uh, not just for math class anymore. All right, so this is going to be, oh, please don't stain this. Oh, that makes me so sad. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna have to get a new page because the stinking eraser decided to do that to me. I like using um, the block watercolor paper because then you're getting thrown across the room. Um, you don't have to stretch. I mean, you probably still should. But um, probably still should should stretch it, but you know, if you're being lazy like me, using um, block watercolor or uh, what you call it, um, like a watercolor panel. Okay, so I guess I'm back in middle. Okay, and I measured her face last night, and she was about like a cute little four inches across. So let's drop down that guide. Usually, I don't like doing gridded drawings, but just because, um, like, I really want to try to get this one accurate. I just. I can't help myself, I gotta. All right, so that's gonna be where her chin is. She has like very rectangular features. It's so funny, like as I'm drawing her and looking at her face, it's like I can hear her, <laughs> I can hear her voice like, Miss Darnell, what are you doing? You're silly, Miss Darnell. Okay, and then her part is like right here. And one of the reasons why I enjoyed choosing this picture is because, um, oh, you can only see the top of my head. Oops. Um, one of the reasons why I really enjoyed choosing this picture 
is because um, like uh, a lot of times like she has her hair pulled back she doesn't have like her loose ringlets and um, curls can be very very difficult for me to draw and I really absolutely love that this is gonna be a challenge for me it's gonna um, just because well, number one, I absolutely adore her curls. But number two, um, yeah, her eyes are about an inch. Um, there is a slightly more than an inch in between. So yeah, I'm gonna grow as an artist with this picture. And then the next side is like slightly more tilted up. Like her, she's smiling. So there's like a slight squint to her eye. Which... Like, don't worry, it's not going to come across as wrinkles um, as long as you handle those shadows gently and not harshly. It's like really not fair how beautiful this child's eyelashes are. wanted to be like I can't believe how beautiful so many of my students are I mean I, yes I can because like you know all kids are beautiful but like some of these kids are just so so very stunning all right so this is like about eyebrows all right and let's get that cute little nose going on there all right so from this center line we're gonna measure down and your nose is about one and a half inches down from there. Oops. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. I know, usually I don't spend this much time drawing, but um, like I'll do like a lot of pre-sketches and then trace from one of my sketches ahead of time um, using transfer paper from my sketchbook. But sometimes I feel like people want to also draw along with me um, to learn not just the painting process, but the drawing process as well. And I always focus a lot in on like the shapes that the values and the shadows make. So you can see I'm trying to get some of those in there. Let me go. Oh, yes, I need to move you over. Is that okay? Oh, I'm gonna move over again. Um, just want to make sure my head's not in there. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna focus a lot in on like the key shapes of the shadows that they're making. Sometimes it can help to have the printout, um, or if you are working digitally to have like the the picture in an open layer. So if you want to, you can trace. The, um, the shapes that they make and so you can get like a little bit of that muscle memory going she has such a cute little nose um, and like that feels you know pretty good to, to develop some of that muscle memory okay so if they, I'll give you notice there no, thank you. you can hear my children comes out to about here. This one comes out about here. And then her very cute little face. God, I love this little face. And don't be scared of the teeth. Like I know that open smiles can be a little bit intimidating. Um, what I try to do is just focus on the area where the teeth aren't. And it sort of tricks you into to drawing teeth that are like awesome. Um, I really like this one. <laughs> You're gonna think I'm such a dorkopotamus. I really like this one shadow here because let me see if I can grab a darker marker or something so you can see because it looks like a dove. <laughs> the little shadow under her eye. I was drawing that last night. I was like, oh, there's a little dove on her face. You know how sort of you can look in the clouds and sort of see different shapes and things like that and I'm like oh wow that club looks like a chicken nugget and then my daughter's like mom they all look like chicken nuggets 
All right. Um, all right. This measurement. Left leg right. It is. All right. See, it, it's weird because her chin, I'm like, I feel like it should be longer, but it's not. There's like this minimal shadow under there. All right, so let's look around where her teeth are. And then they kind of come up into her smile, her lip. Like her lip is really unique the way it is. Because if you look at this, like the smile, the way it curves up, like you can't see the lip in the corners here but then it sort of comes up here and it really gives like this lovely i don't know what to consider that gap there and and shape to her lip like it gives it um it can really tell like the form that it's like wrapping around her jaw which is cool and then it gives you the hint at the fullness of um, her bottom lip. Just gonna slightly get that shaded there. Hopefully my camera's picking this up well enough. All right, so then let's get that little dove shape shadow there. Let's move this over that way. Uh, save those changes, move this over this way. Um, so let me look at some comments. It's good to see my process. I am not using a um, watercolor pencil. This is a Cole Honor Magic Pencil. Uh, usually when you see them in the stores, a lot of times they're like about this thick. Um, and... I really like it just because it adds a little bit of chaos. Um, and then if you like doing cross hatching, when you layer over and over and over top, um, it gives you like a really cool effect. Um, as in like it, the colors layer really well and they get darker and darker um, as you layer more or like, you know, it, it's just, it's fun. I like it. Um, yeah, so I have bought them on Amazon. I have seen them at Michael's and other craft stores. Um, and yeah, <laughs> like honestly, they should just start sponsoring me because I'm always using their products. I've never tried their paint though. I've tried their, um, their regular graphite drawing pencils. Um, and I love their colored pencils because they have this one set of tri-colored pencils and they're brilliant. eyebrows in here I hope this eyebrow circles to start yay and then there's this shadow sometimes it really does help to have this black and white printout next to um and then her ear so that you can see these shadows better and be less distracted by the colors so that starts like under her eye and then her earring I'm just going to eyeball the earring and then it comes down to her jaw and then she got her cute hair and then she got this wavy line here coming down for her neck and then she has a t-shirt and then that sort of goes like that okay, and then boop, this line of her lip comes like sort of straight down slight curve to it And then the shoulders. So her shoulders are going at this sort of angle. Got that one shoulder up, one shoulder down. I made her neck too long again. Sorry, kiddo. I elongate features. It's probably because I have like a really long nose personally. 
yeah, I still need to definitely put on the cheeks. Um, some of her cheek is covered by her hair. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And then I'm just going to do like a rough line of where her hair is. I'm not going to focus on like each individual curl just because um, it's really difficult for me to do that because, you know, her curls, curls are just like intense because like they still wrap around the head, but then they still have such volume and then they have like their own individual forms themselves. Thank God, like her curls um, are more like a wave and they follow like a fairy, fairly regular pattern. So that helps. <laughs> um, and when I do eventually paint her curls. Oh, bonjour, no, from Natalia. <laughs> it's so funny. I have so many Spanish speaking students, and from the teeny bit I remember of Italian, I start speaking in like Spangtalian to them, and they're like, sorry, you're crazy. I'm like, sorry. Come vai? Okay, someone says, I think that you're creating the magic, not the pencil in my sketch. The little one is magically appearing on your page. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of fun how, as you're drawing, the face just kind of emerges, especially if you are using, like, um, like a technique where um, you're measuring and then, like, you have, like, these weird shapes and suddenly it all starts coming together and you're like, oh, hey, this is kind of cool. My pencil sharpener is trying to die. Como esta señora? Um, muy bien, Benny. Gracias. Um, you too. Oh, I got pencils stuck right there. They're literally googly eyes on everything. <laughs> Um, I actually, I'm going to get myself fired, um, <laughs> fired via googly eyes. Um, I, my vice principal, my assistant principal, that's like in charge of supervising me, my direct supervisor, um, Angel's not really the best at, uh, locking his office door. And where there is an open door, an art teacher will wander and explore. And um, I took in uh, a handful of googly eyes and some glue. And so now all of Angel's office supplies, sorry, Mr. Pena, not sorry, um, are covered in googly eyes. Um, he was kind of amused, I guess kind of not so now I've just been sneaking in and posting um some of my kids artwork on as well as he he appreciates that way way more um but yeah like when as a teacher I am totally down for prank wars as long as it's not like malicious plank prank wars I don't know what a plank war would be um I'm all for that it's just it's fun just to to leave a little sunshine and laughter in someone's day. I'm not like about setting mice free in the building or something like that. Although I did catch a mouse. Um, yeah, I totally did catch a mouse. <laughs> I named it, uh, I named her Duchess and Duchess Blinky. And I was strictly told by the principal, I was not allowed to keep it as a class pet. So I took it to a park across the street and I set it free. Um, there was a cave cricket that 
I sort of missed the message that needed to be caught, and I totally would have caught that too. I'm not afraid of bugs or rodents. Why am I be afraid of a rat? Because they're bigger. But I, I, if I had gloves, I could probably catch it. Like, I have had cats growing up, so I have experience of, like, them letting chipmunks and things loose in my house. Um, so I'm totally fine with that. Okay, so enough talking, enough drawing. Let's start painting because I've already used up, like, a half an hour. Oh, I forgot the boner here. Whoops. Let's, like, you know, do that. Uh, oh. <laughs> Here are my notorious hiccups. <laughs> Uh-oh. I just said I was going to stop drawing and yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, porcupine pancake. I, I did respond to you in Italian because <laughs> that's how I do. Because uh, also, was it three years ago? Maybe it was four. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I don't remember, but I really enjoyed like learning um like a few phrases in a different language like every week like i taught myself like some german phrases um like a thank you you're welcome good morning how are you um i remember like three i tried to learn some like korean phrases it was really fun i think i should do that again but i really really need to do the whole spanish thing like get that in my head because that would make life so much easier especially for like my real 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 little kids um my kinders who their first language is spanish um and it would be nice to be able to offer them that comfort in my classroom that hey i can understand what you're saying um especially when you know they don't understand something or they need something from me like, I understand, like, when they're asking, you know, to go to the bathroom or, you know, I have a headache. Or, you know, usually we can gesture if there if there's some other sort of emergency, like, Mrs. Arno, there's pain all over me. I don't know how they do it. Like, but they are so fast when it comes to getting paint all over themselves. Like, I have this one little cutie. And I swear, like... I didn't even have paint out for more than five minutes. I barely like got through the instructions. I don't think I even had the paint on her table yet. And it was like up to her elbows. And I was just like, how? So I now keep a case of um, baby wipes in my room. And specifically, you know, just for like cleaning up certain children. Um, and then, like, the next time I was working with paint and my kinders, I, um, rather than using the liquid paints, I was using the, um, the, the, the tempera cakes. Um, and so they're a little bit less messy because it's not, like, liquid that can be spilled all over the place. She still had it everywhere. I was just so completely fascinated with this child and her ability to paint herself um and then another time she was not even using paint um but ended up with like green marker all over her ear and I was like how did that happen and she just sort of smiled and giggled at me and I was like sweetie do you paint at home and she was just like yeah and I was like okay do you do you make this much of a mess at home with paint and she just smiled and said no and I was like, oh, so either, you know, A, she's completely punking me and just enjoying watching, you know, me chase her around with uh, baby wipes before she exits the room or B, like, she is this messy at home and she just, you know, is teasing me. 
oh my gosh, Jordan, yeah, the hiccups. I didn't even, like, I don't know. I've already lost my train of thought, like, six times, and the hiccups. Have I, have I been singing yet? Because I usually do that, too. All right, so now I'm going to start applying with a larger brush. This is a size 4 quill brush, but it's equivalent to, like, a probably a 14 um, round brush just because I want to get a nice layer of water going on here. And I don't want it sopping wet. I just want to have it glossy. So it's good um, if you tilt your page in different angles so that you can see the spots that you missed. And you don't want like huge puddles. You just want some gloss because I just want my paint to flow down for this first layer. <laughs> so on Friday, I asked my little queen, what are your favorite colors? She said red, blue, yellow, and purple. And her mom said her favorite color is pink so I'm gonna combine all those colors into the painting um, so yeah let's have a color explosion and then after I put down this this just gentle layer of color I'm gonna go back in and start pulling in some of those key um, shadows and, and shapes to, to really you know, just pull everything all together uh, let's get, so that's um, quinacridone magenta. I'm pulling out some, what I think is phthalo blue. I don't know. It's right next to another blue that I have. So I'm never really sure which one I'm using. So I'm just going to put this in some of the darker areas. Let's get some of my Azo yellow. Put that one especially in that bow area and the shirt. So I am just letting the colors spread and dance all over the page. Because this is watercolor, it will dry lighter. So things may seem super intense right now, but it's going to dry lighter. Don't worry. It always does. Ciao, signorina. I'm sure it's going on. Um, I married into an Italian family. Um, my husband's family is from Sicily. Um, they're from um, Rometta. And found out that there are two Rometta's. There's Rometta de la Montaña up in the mountains, and then there's Rometta Maria, which is Maretta, Rometta by the sea. So when we were in Sicily, we visited the wrong Rometta. And we're wondering why we were seeing like a bunch of Cucinatis and no Arnos. And I was like, hmm. so like maybe about like a year later, realized that, oh, we went to the wrong Rometta. But yeah, I love Italy. I absolutely adore Italy. Um, like Florence is my jam. Did my mouse die? It's ready to go. It's gonna go through the food and see where it's going. All right, I don't think I missed too many comments. No, that's cool. Dog, you were going to knock that over on yourself. It's time for some Earl Grey. I learned the hard way that when I have tea or beverages in uh, the studio, they need to have a lid. Because otherwise there will be paint or a paintbrush in it. And that's just probably not good for my health. Now I'm going to mix up some purple, 
violet and I'm just going to take my monocridone magenta, mix that with some of the phthalo blue, which I learned from artist Tracy Lewis. She's amazing. Um, it's like the world's best violet. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I love how artists on Instagram are cool. They're not like about gatekeeping. I was like, hey, how do you mix that gorgeous violet? And she's like, oh, I use these two colors. And I was like, what? You're awesome. So yeah, I don't believe in gatekeeping. Really? So, anybody who speaks non-English, what do you call hiccups in your native tongue? So yeah, I'm just working in some some basic shadows with these colors, but still like letting it be an explosion of loveliness. Now I'm going to mix some red. So I'm going to take the chronocridone magenta. Isn't that lovely? Rinse my brush. We always say, you know, dip it in the water, then dab it on the towel or the sponge. Remember that, kiddos. Water control. It's important. I'm going to mix some azo yellow with that and as you see now I have red just a little bit more yellow just a little bit more and I'm going to add this to the shadow here <laughs> my students some of them I don't think they know what to do with me some of them adore me some of them are just like oh my god where's another teacher um what I really like about my school is, um, at first I was like weirded out that like, I have like so many extra, like, uh, supervisory duties, like, um, after school, um, before like I leave, like rather than have like bus or dismissal, um, I have to go to the cafeteria and I hang out with the kindergartners, um, before they, they start their aftercare program. Um, and then I also have lunch duty followed by recess duty with the third graders and just getting to have that extra time with them not in the classroom like I'm still in the role of a, of a supervisor but like I'm not teaching them I'm just supervising and um so like I get to see them in a more relaxed state like of play um and you know sometimes I'll join in with whatever they're doing um I shocked some first graders the other week when I was supervising them um, and they weren't like doing the best job at sharing the football. And so I jumped out onto the playground and I started having a pass with them and they're like, oh my gosh, hey, our teacher is playing with us. Um, but I also really enjoy my rainbow hair and every single time like I touch it up and redye it, I'm like, hey, you know, what color streak should I put in now? And they're like, you should do some more magenta, put in some green, or it'll just completely surprise them. So it, it's fun to do that. All right, so I got this first layer down. I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm gonna just dry off my brush and lift off any areas where I really wanna keep some highlight, like up here on her forehead. It's because everything is still like beautifully damp. Um, here on her cheek. Man, her mom got like some really great lighting for this shot so I'm happy about that hair dryer time and the cool thing is I remembered to plug it in ahead of time
one of the ways that you know that your um your first layer is dry enough uh, for you to go and back do the second layer is you'll see your paper number one shrink back down to its original size it will start to lay fat <laughs> lay flat <laughs> um rather than being all wrinkly um, and also when you touch it, um, it won't be cold. Like this is still slightly cold, even though I just had the hot hair dryer on it. But for the most part, it is shrunk back to its original size. It's amazing how much the paper will expand. Um, and that's why it's a good idea to stretch your paper. All right, so let's get to my little princess started with some details. Move my protractor. All right, I am now grabbing um, a number eight round brush. I really need to have like a number four out as well. Out. Not out. Not from Canada. Here's my number four. Are you a number four? Yeah, you're a number four. How do I do that? I think I just saw it. No, you're not it. Where's my boo-boo? Here's my boo-boo brush. I have no idea where I got this brush from, what brand it is, because everything's all worn off. But its bristles are slightly stiffer, and um, it's really great for, like, scrubbing out or lifting a boo-boo. So I call it my boo-boo brush. Whatever. It, it's how I do. Okay, so let me zoom in. She has like these really, really intense dark eyes and she can look into your soul with them. But at the same time um, that they're so dark, like I feel like there's almost like a, like a little blue like aura around the outside. So that's what I'm going to be starting with. And then like the bottom part, since she's smiling, like her eye is sort of like squinting up. So, oh, I gotta remember you don't stick your head under the camera, Lauren. Also, don't hit your head on the camera. So I wanna make sure I get that little bit of, um, little aura in there. So I'm just going to paint the whole, the whole iris like blue and then try to make sure I keep that sort of squinty line going under there. And I'm also going to bring this into like the bottom lash line. Um, I don't feel like reaching across the page to rinse my brush because I don't like how freckled the lines are from sun damage. Um, yeah, I'm just checking this with this, um, yeah, it's kind of weird that like I'm painting the whites of her eye blue, but the whites of her eye are in shadow, so they cannot be paper white, because that would look really weird. Okay, then I'm going to mix a little bit of violet. A little bit of the violet. Why am I whispering in the violet? You can always tell I'm doing details because then I start whispering and talking to my paint or talking to the portrait. I love painting kids and babies. They don't take themselves too seriously when you take their picture. Unless, of course, it's my kid. In which case, it is like, get my kid back. She's such a Disney princess. I'm like, what? How did this happen? How are you mine? That's so cute. No, I just kind of made her look like a mouse with that shadow there. Don't worry. It'll all come together. And like... Under her nose, there is like the shadow from the cast of her nose, but then there's also um, like right there on her nose, not under her nose, but like on her nose, um, there is the reflection, the bounced light. 
from her shirt, like bouncing up this really beautiful warm yellow glow. So it's going to be fun having the con contrast of um, this purple shadow there. And then eventually I am going to go in and um, pull out that really cool highlight. So this side of the shadow is a little bit of a um, harder line versus this side, which is a softer line. So I'm just going to diffuse that with some clean water. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start doing those really cute shadows at the corners of her mouth. And I want them super, super dark so that you can tell how wide her smile is, how big her smile is. And then remember, you're not painting individual teeth. You are just painting the, the shadows around the teeth. And that's another thing. Never leave teeth paper white because that looks really weird. They, once again, you know, once um, this bit dries, I will be adding some shadow to her teeth. So how's everybody doing with their painting so far? Um, don't forget, you can always post your work onto the Sketchy Art School page. Um, you know, today, tomorrow, the coming weekend, because um, I will be checking it. Like, if you want me to give you critique, anything like that, just leave me a message. Make sure that you, um, if you do want me to critique your work, that you do like that whole at, you know, at Lauren or no. So, or if you don't feel like posting it publicly and you just want to like send me a direct message you can do that hey my watch just told me that i'm lazy and i need to stand up no, just kidding it's not happening and i'm not as squeaky today because i'm not sitting in my typical desk chair. Oh my gosh, she looks like such a baby right now. <laughs> like I uh, like her sheet that her features are too short. Hopefully that will straighten itself out. And soften that up a little bit too. Okay. On zoom. I need to check on the specs of the um the iPads and see if they're as water resistant as like the phones because I get this thing splashed a lot. All right, and I'm going to paint the shadow that is under her chin on her neck, which is going to define her elbow a little bit. underneath is a little bit more and then it has to come down and then get a smaller bear so this one can get a sneak peek into the shadow sort of let that come down and then a little bit more of like beige color to come up here and then we're going to do a little sparkle. Always letting these colors mingle together into that shadow. I was like, oh my god, why are you even playing inside from a saturating color? Because I want to. Because <laughs> I like painting rainbows. It's so cute. Some of my students when I first started teaching, they, um, you know, like, especially if, like, you know, it's their first year at the school, they can't remember all their teachers' names, and one of my little guys coming up to me, and he's like, can I call you Miss Rainbow? I was like, yeah, you can call me Mrs. Rainbow. So they like that. And even though I know he knows my name now, he still calls me Mrs. Rainbow. So now I'm painting the shadow part um, that her hair is making underneath the earring. Look how those hairs grow. 
and I wanted to find this one little curly Q here, which is going to be right here. So porcupine pancake art, um, when you're working on your iPad, are you using um, Procreate? Do you use like um, the reference tool to hold the picture? Do you do like a split screen thing or do you use like um, like a translucent layer underneath with your reference. You know, just asking for a friend. Gonna darken up this shadow here with some blue. So, I mean, like I just build up layer upon layer of shadows. Oh my gosh, I'm already coming up to like my hour mark. <laughs> Oops. I'm still not good at sticking to like the time schedule on Pam. I'm always like, oh, it takes me five minutes. No, no, Lauren, it, it doesn't take you five minutes. It takes you five hours. It just feels like it's five minutes because you're enjoying it so much. All right, time to get this really pretty dark shade towards under her eye. Although the shadow itself is like more purple in the actual photo, I made it orange. God only knows why. I think I want to keep the, the shadows that are lower a little bit more in the warm tone because of the reflection of her yellow queen shirt which is really fun. Come on, that's kind of a scallop. I want to make sure I get some of the skin tone up into her scalp. Screen and freehanding it. You are a braver artist than I. I'm such like a procreate noob. Even though I've had it for like a few years now. I'm gonna get some more pink. I feel like I just put down a shape of the shadow and then because she's so young, I just go back and like soften the edge. And I just go back and forth doing that a lot. So I find a shape, I paint it, I soften the edge. That's like the key to painting um, young skin is just the softest edges that you can get. But I mean, you don't want to like blur everything away. Like clearly there has to be like a um, demarcation of like where like a neck and like a nose and everything like, but th th those don't have to be as soft, obviously, because that's where you go with that. So I'm just going to take some of this color and put it on her mouth. lip on there because she's looking really creepy without lips <laughs> a little too orange Lauren just want to soften up the edge here as well all right maybe that orange under her eye is a little harsh I can tone it down later Tone it down, Lauren. Uh, 
That would be my dog kicking the closet door. So I hope everyone has a really lovely Thanksgiving today. And uh, I will be giving this painting away to her mom. Hopefully we can get some prints made in time for the holiday, for the big winter holidays. See where Grandma came up from. So I'm adding now violet to her eyes to darken them, but still sort of leaving the edge a little bit blue. Because of that like little blue bit that I always see around the edge. put in the crease of her eye. Let's get this one in. Whoa! I didn't realize it was that wet then. And then of course I will be putting um, brown on top of her eyes so I can get you know her proper eye color but I want to have because you know watercolor is all translucent and such I want to be able to have the violet and the blue under there maybe like some hints of orange too at some point in there so that they can shine through Because that's the beauty of watercolor. It's translucent and magnificent. Let's get the shadow that is on the side of her face here. Get that to come down. And then drop in yellow as it gets lower to start reflecting um, the yellow of her t-shirt. And then like the outer edge of her skin, um, if you zoom into the photograph, like there is that sort of almost like a blue halo um, just from like, I guess, a different light source reflecting on her, which is kind of like fun if you can like attempt to get that in there. But if you can't, it's cool. Sometimes I'll go back with, um, whatchamacallit, uh, white gel pen and put in like those teeny tiny like little edge glowing lines there are times I won't now it's starting to look like my girl it's weird how like with the, the give and take, the push and pull of, of painting, like sometimes you lose the likeness and other times it comes back. Um, so yeah, I did just hit the, um, <laughs> the hour mark. So, I mean, if you want to sign off now, um, if it's okay, sketchy, like I'll keep on painting a little bit. Um, so her favorite color, Porcupine Art, um, she really enjoys um, red, blue, and violet her mom likes pink um but yeah if you ever want to um, join my sketchy class and learn more about like my the method to my madness um you can do that um once again like please 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 paint um draw sketch doodle uh whatever you feel inspired today please post it onto um sketchy art school and you can post it like directly onto the um the 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 post the article i don't know what you, what you want to call it um for paints giving and you know join in the the community um and and all that sort of stuff there. so i just want to quickly type something here let my family know what's going on
to your mouse. Please start working. Boo 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 doo boo boo doo boo doo. Okay. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, thank you, thank you, Sketchy, for posting that link there for to where to share your art so that we can really enjoy the community. Don't be afraid, like if you don't feel your art is like up to par or any of that nonsense. Like we're we're all on our own art journey, and I mean. If you don't feel like posting your own art, at least, like, support everybody else who is posting their art. You know, leave comments, compliments, critique. Um, it's always good to do that because artists need each other. My mom just joined um, an online painting group, and she's like, oh, I don't want to post my art yet. Not until, like, I get it good how I want it. And I'm like... How are you going to get any better if you don't let your community critique you? Like, you're not really a community member. And, I mean, sometimes it's really nice that people will let themselves be vulnerable in that moment. So just remember, some people are really, it does take them a lot of um, courage to post their artwork to share. So just be mindful of that and um, just be very thankful of the bravery that people have when they do share their artwork because... You know, it is a piece of us. Um, and so just be conscientious. And, you know, show them gratitude. Which Thanksgiving is, you know, it's all about gratitude for art. And how art, you know, can really affect us. It can affect our community. It can really have a positive impact on our lives. So, yeah, I'm shedding what I get for like washing my hair today. So I want to bring some of this darkness in here. The darkness. If you can really see. I'm just knocking everything over on my desk. Knocking everything all over my desk and my floor. So I'm going to start working on these little parts here. I always have two pronouns because one is just gonna completely get demolished. And um, those of you who are in the States right now, or actually even if you're not, just, you know, tis the season to show the gratitude for what you do have and if you can, you know, donate and give to others, um, whether it be like donating food to a food drive or a food bank, um, you know, those who can, you know, it's, it's a really good season to do that. And those who are in need, like, just be willing to have the, the humbleness and the gratitude to accept those gifts and don't be afraid to accept those gifts if you need them because you know for some people that's that's their love language is giving and that's their their way of showing gratitude is giving back so it's okay if you need help it's okay if you need to ask for help got to get back that little Love shadow in there. Gotta be careful. I don't want to put too much purple. I don't want to give her a black eye. <laughs> All right, I have this shadow. I need to get like under her chin. Oh, and I moved on to like a number four brush. And hey, if like if you have any ideas for the sketchy art school, um, like anything that you want to learn, uh, feel free to message sketchy. I know that we we do have um, like a, a, a post for you to, you know, put down your ideas for what you want, and what your interests are. Um, you know, feel free to do that because 
you know, we, we always are trying to give the community what it wants. Here comes those brown eyes. I'm just gonna use some, um, I think it's burnt umber. <laughs> I lost my little chart like ages ago for what my colors actually are. But for the most part, I sort of have them memorized. Ow! My foot's falling asleep. Because I can't sit in a chair, in a chair, in a chair like a normal person. I'm always like cross-legged or perched like some sort of weird bird. Pardon me, I got a bad cold. Post in the comments. <laughs> How do you sit in a chair when you'd make art? Do you sit like a little vulture? Are you like cross-legged? Can you actually sit with your like feet like? parallel to the ground. I can't. Copen Copenhagen, Denmark in the middle of cooking dinner. Aww. What are you making for dinner? What should I make for dinner? I'm gonna make more seafood. To move back to my number eight. And I'm going to take a real, real gentle wash of my, um, what color are you? Burnt umber. And just put like a nice little glaze here to get her beautiful honey skin tone. really pretty music and I'm wondering what it is. Oh, someone's playing Minecraft. <laughs> oh my gosh, sitting on your bed, one leg off, one on the floor. <laughs> you sound like a very flexy artist if you're able to like paint and do art in your bed with like one leg here, the other leg there. It's another thing I love about my students is we can talk like gaming together because I like to game with my own children. Except for Roblox. I don't really like Roblox all that much. But I, I really enjoy playing um, Minecraft and I'm really bad at Fall Guys. But then it also gives me something else to connect with my students on. So I was like doing all this talk earlier about how I was going to do her hair and I haven't even like begun to handle her hair at all. Whoops. Images of her face is so stinking cute. <laughs> so I'll just start adding some of the main shadows that I 
you see in her hair. Start getting these in. I'll probably do them in violet. And then do like an overlay with, um, if I want to, with some of the burnt umber. Emo blue. There we go. So what I feel like I'm doing with her hair, the way I want to handle it is I want to focus in almost as if I'm like cutting in with negative shapes, like negative space and define whoop, the highlight of her waves with um, accentuating the shadows that are like behind her hair. There's some really, really interesting shapes there. Grilled tomato with bone mold. Ooh, that sounds good. I like grilled tomato. I feel pretty lucky that um, I live in New Jersey. And no offense to anybody else out there in the world, but I think New Jersey has some of the best tomatoes. We do bear the... Uh, the moniker of the, the garden state, so. Especially since I live in, in southern New Jersey. Now I'm perched again, like my knees are all up as I'm painting. Well, sweetheart, if you ever wanted a uh, purple hair, here you go. <laughs> Mrs. Arno is giving you purple hair. I have like three reference photos around me. I have like, I print out, I have my iPad in front of me and then I'm still using the teeny tiny thing on the screen. Just checking on my heels. Sorry, I made that like really doofy face there. Hey, Smalls. I can hear you. Over the summer, we got, um, we adopted another dog so that our current dog could have, like, a friend. And she decided that my son was her person. He was so cute. Like, as soon as we walked into, like, the room where she was, her little doggy apartment, She immediately just like jumped on him, started giving him kisses, and I was just like, "Oh, we have to bring this one home." Oh, we did. So I'm trying to hold the brush by like the end of it, just so I can get like really loose 
fun wavy strokes. Um, I don't want, I don't know, like I don't want, I don't know how to describe it, like uh, with the effect I'm going for. Like I want her hair to be really free. I don't want it to be like, I don't want her hair to be stiff. So that's why I'm holding my brush farther back. So I have like a little bit less control of it. So I can get a looser sort of feel to it. And now I'm gonna use watered down um, burnt umber to work back in the rest of the shapes of her hair. And I do definitely want to keep it watered down because like on the edges of her hair, um, like you know where like when you have curly hair sometimes like you got those little like flyaways and they almost create like a blurred effect. Um, so I want to keep that nice and soft. Drawing with camera hovering over my head is such a struggle for me. I have now been more respect for sketchy teachers. <laughs> yeah, um, I have like one of those um, like telescopic like arms. Is it called telescopic? I think it's like a gooseneck. I'm sort of like what you would have like a gooseneck lamp on. Um, and I have it clamped to a table next to my desk so that it doesn't shake as much when I hit my head on it or bump the desk. But I mean, you live, you learn. Like I've had to completely re-record lessons because my head was like right under the camera and that's kind of like annoying I don't know why, I just really like painting people with blue hair. <laughs> it's fun. Because, I mean, as long as you have the correct values, it really doesn't matter what color you choose. Oh, I mean, it sometimes does, because, like, blue the cool colors will push things further into the background where warm colors will bring things forward. Um, but if you have the correct value, people will understand what it is that you are painting. I'm definitely going to go back later um, at some point and really define some individual curls and individual waves. But right now I just want to get like a, a nice sense of just where the highlights and the shadows are. That's the best way to really 
paint and draw hair, um, like rather than going after and tackling each individual strand, you just really want to look for highlights, shadows, patterns, waves, um, almost treat it as like one uniform solid rather than just like individual strands and then, you know, go into it later and pick out like key ones because you don't, unless you're doing extreme photorealism, you really don't need to pick out each individual because, you know, you can let your viewer's brain fill in any gaps. That's what the human mind does when we see things. We're not like, we, we still like pull on the schemas that we've already developed in our brains. And we just look at little bits of information and just like fill in the rest. That's just psychology. Because otherwise it would just be visual overload. All the time, everywhere. Blink. Just a hairpin glued to a paper towel. Because that's normal. Alright, gonna go back to uh I don't know, my number four brush. <laughs> Uh-oh, there they are. They're back. <laughs> I'll just do some more of these little details here and make sure I really get her features, her key features um, popping with those shadows. Because I diffuse them, mm, some of them a little bit too much, but that's the glory of watercolor. If you do it a little too light, you can always go back versus doing something a little too dark. It's a little bit more difficult to, to lift up that. God, I love this kid in that smile. Oh, thank you for saying that my lights and shadows are spot on. <laughs> Sometimes I get like so insecure or I get so super anxious. But just because like I know my muse personally and um, being that this is a gift for her, well, for her mom. Um, maybe when she's an adult she'll want the original. I don't know. Um... It's, it's a little bit more intimidating when, when you are painting someone that you know because you have to fight that preconceived sch schema of, of what you have in your head versus what the references that you're working off of. Um, although sometimes like your references can almost be like a little bit deceptive because it's only one aspect of them. Um, and it might not be the the clearest depiction of who they are with their what their spirit really is. So, you know, it all just depends. Bigger brush. I'm 
make them a little purple until they start to dry the shape a bit. in a little bit more yellow and it's her your line stop blotting your brush on your pants this is why we don't have nice things all right I feel like I need to pull just a little bit more shadow here and then a lot more shadow right here. And a lot more, a little, way more shadow underneath her eye here. Just let that, let that sort of loosely go where it wants to go. Get my uh, whispery Bob Ross. No, need more blue. Good thing Melina is blue. Good thing I got that blue. There we go. Now I'm happy with how that shadow is going. Alright. Now time to get this is a big brush. This is like my big, like oval, but it still has like a cat tongue to it. I think that's what you call it. Or, you know, just any big brush you have to cover a big space. Because you always want to make sure that your brush matches the size of the space that you're painting. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time if you're trying to use a huge brush to paint a small space. And if you're trying to use like a teeny tiny brush to paint a little space, it's just like, no, always want it to match what you need to do. Because th this one is pretty cool, though, because it comes to such a fine point that if I do need to like quickly rotate it to the side and get, you know, something going there, like a smaller shape. It, I still have the ability to do that, so it's a nice little tool to have in there. Ooh, I really like how this is turning out. I'm happy with Camper. I just sort of cleaned it a little bit, and I want to lift some of these spots. Where it's like a lighter yellow. All right, I'm gonna dry it and just get one more layer of detail on her nose and her eyes, and So since we're wearing this much of this with then what? I I trying to read the comment and I'm just like what? <laughs> so yeah, if you missed any portion of this or if you you know gotta go because I I know I am going over time. Um, you know you can always catch the replay. It is going to be saved. Or however long YouTube lasts, unless it has a complete like you know meltdown in every single one of their servers, it goes whoosh. Um, 
but yeah, if you need to like replay it, want to do part now or you know watch ahead of time and then come back later, you can always do that. Google brush. Oh, you're welcome for the session. I'm, I'm glad uh, that you could make it and are enjoying your time painting. Um, feel free to take, I know that we just ran some promotions this week for, for um, some of our new upcoming classes. The, the big challenge is the 30 faces, 30 days. We got some new teachers coming on. So um, when you see those emails for the sales, jump on them, especially like when you can get those like two for deals, they're pretty cool. Um, and don't ever feel obligated that you have to finish like all 30 faces in 30 days. Like I'm still working on the graphite challenge and that was like from six months ago. <laughs> I just made her look like she's wearing lipstick. Sorry, babe. I need some pain spray. You know I'm getting close to the end, but I'm just like, pain's great. Yeah, I am really excited for the new in <laughs> instructors. I've been checking out their um, Instagram feeds and being like, whoa. Like some serious, serious, amazing, talented people coming on board. Um, I'm really psyched for that. No, itch. That was a really loud itch. Yeah, I know. Gotta get these cray cray lashes in here. I hate that I'm leaning on this. I don't know where my um my painting gloves are. Sorry, I just hit the microphone with my um paintbrush. I was just about to ask where my paintbrush is. It's in your mouth. So yeah, I mean, like you don't have to wait for the next challenge. I mean, you can always join some of the ones that are like, <coughs> excuse me, on demand at the moment. And um, those are nice because there's a little less high pressure. I mean, you might not get the immediate feedback of the community because it's like, once again, like an on-demand class. And um, so the, um, the message board is not like as active, but I mean, some people still, some of the instructors are still always checking them out. So you can always still do that. After watching this demo, your class definitely will be the next one I purchase. Love your work and personality. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, be prepared for a lot of singing and uh, hiccups. <laughs> My students at work, they definitely have experience with singing. I 
Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to probably end it here. I'm going to do some more um, work on it like later tonight or tomorrow. I will post what I have now um, onto the Sketchy Art School. And then I will phone words. I will post the finished product when I'm 100% done. Um, maybe I'll get around to recording it on um, my personal YouTube channel. You know, if I do, I'll post that too. If not, oh well. Um, yeah, I really enjoy painting and chatting with everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, just keep on having gratitude for art and being able to be part of a wonderful art community. All right, so it was wonderful, wonderful being here with everyone. Painting. I always see like more things I need to do. I need to like put it down. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna like overwork it. So it always is good to like step back. <laughs> okay, let's wash my brushes. Close the palette, wash the brushes. Maybe that'll help me be able to step away from it. So yeah, thank you to everyone who's joining. Um, thank you to future people who are joining for the replay. Um, Feel free to leave any comments either here on the YouTube channel or um, after you post your work onto the Sketchy Art School. I know somewhere in the comments um, we dropped the link for the post where to, to um, upload your artwork. So well, let me just go to here. So yeah, thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, a wonderful something but happy thanksgiving all right bye-bye for now